After a life-changing divine encounter during a psychedelic experience, I was compelled to search for the truth. What I found was extraordinary. God revealed himself to me, but I'll share that story later. But first, I want to show you how reading countless religious texts revealed to me surprising connections. This dude is completely full of it. What a load of- Whoa! Ah! So let's start at the beginning of existence. We have God, the all-pervading energy of goodness and fulfillment. And right about now, you might be thinking, if God is all good, then how do we end up in this mess on Earth? <laughs> yep, that's me. You're probably wondering how I ended up in this situation. So in order to understand how we got here, let's talk about how the Big Bang that created the universe happened. So God was providing endless love and fulfillment, right? But to who? No one. And this is where the trouble began. God created the first vessel, and for ease of understanding, let me describe what a vessel means. Alright, so we have two batteries. A regular battery holds energy, and it has two poles. A positive end and a negative end. Damn, that battery thick as fuck. But the second battery is the vessel, which is a more complex understanding of the soul. So instead of a positive and negative polarity, the two poles are the masculine and the feminine. But God's first creation, who was it? Adam and Eve? Abba and Ima? The anima and animus? You could say that, but I prefer Shiva and Shakti, the divine masculine and feminine. Two poles, one vessel. Also, just a tip, you are a vessel, a single soul with two poles. But how did the first vessel get thrown out of the Garden of Eden, or the endless fulfillment of God's love? Well, let me tell you a little story. So the original vessel should have lived in bliss forever, right? But let's paint this in a little bit of a different light. There goes Dorble absolutely demolishing everyone, and he goes for the shot, and it's good! Don't you dare tell him I paid everyone to let him win. Wait, I didn't do anything to serve this win? Oh my gosh. The endless fulfillment of God comes with an aspect of shame since they've done nothing to earn it. They wanted to create their own fulfillment, so they resisted God's light, which created the Big Bang, breaking apart the original vessel and what we call our reality, a space for them to create their own fulfillment. You know what? I don't think I will anymore. This act of resisting God's light created the Big Bang, creating the multiple dimensions, which for ease of understanding, picture them like curtains that block out more and more of God's light. So what dimension are we in? There's this concept of seven heavens and many beliefs. Across the board, the physical realm is almost always recognized as the lowest heaven. All right, I'll let you do your own thing. Wait, wait, wait. oh, oh no, no, come, come back. back. Oh, oh no. no. Now the dimension above us. This is where a lot of these mythological entities reside. It can be reached through astral projection and heavy psychedelics, but it's not for the faint of heart. So when we think of something conscious, you might think of something like a rabbit or a human. But in these higher realms, envision it to be a conscious energy or a soul. The communication is telepathic and it doesn't have a physical body. This is due to the fact that they are closer to unity with the source. There's less separation between them and their environment. <laughs> A <laughs> sure thing, man. There are hell realms, and unlike the common conception, most beliefs see them as a temporary place of specific punishment based on past sins or bad karma, as well as a place of purification. Hell is depicted as a realm separate from the divine presence, and in Buddhism, if you have enough negative karma, you will reincarnate as an animal, and then after that proceeds the hell realms. What are you gonna do about it? You can't do anything. Wanna bet? No, 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 no. Ah, shit. Here we go again. Now I think it's time to talk about the importance of the devil. I said, hold up, wait a minute, something ain't right. I know how off-putting that sounds, but let me explain. So in order to have free will, there must be a polarity of good and evil, or God and devil. And no, I'm not saying the devil is as powerful as God. A light can extinguish the darkness, but the darkness cannot extinguish the light. But the devil is also called the opposition or adversary. But if we don't know who our enemy is, then how are we supposed to resist it? Come here, bud. I can give you the best dog house in the city, and I can give you all the dog treats and the best squeaky toys. You have free will. I won't bribe you, but I'll always love you unconditionally. So who is the devil? Well, here's a hint. He resides in the same place as God, your mind. In the battleground of the soul, the devil is multifaceted. One part is your ego, and the ego's intention is to feel separation from unity with desire and attachment, which as we know, desire can be a very nasty beast, and attachment leads to all negative traits and suffering. So tell me about yourself. 
Well, I work at a bank. So let's say you got fired. Well, I'd be unemployed? So your identity is based on circumstance. Well, I suppose it is, but I'd like to believe I'm a person who thinks. So when you have no thoughts, it's not you then? Remember, you are the observer, so how do we overcome our ego? Knowing is half the battle, but realizing that there's a battle for your soul and your free will is the judge of whether you want a return to unity or remain in separation? Well, the devil can plant the seed. Only you can water it. Hey man, get out of my garden, you vermin. Well, the devil traditionally wears you down slowly through thoughts and reality interference, the power is removed when you realize you can just watch the attempts and let them pass by. To be reactive is a horrible move in nearly all religious views. Oh, th this idiot! Ow, yo, yo, I gotta make sure I'm okay, I'm good? Okay, I gotta make sure this dude's okay. So before I tell my encounter with God, I need to talk about psychedelics and the revelations they induce since about these understandings it might seem a little confusing, so I see the brain as a limiter of consciousness, but when you take psychedelics this limiter is raised, often called raising your consciousness. Well I recommend against it, since what you can learn under these experiences can make life in this world much more difficult, since some things learned are seemingly opposed to what's valued in life, so I've experienced it for you guys. So here's the revelations and how they connect with this picture I've painted. Starting with the feeling of oneness, everything being energy and connected. Well, everything's a fragmentation of the original vessel, hence the feeling of oneness. Our source is God's endless energy, we just mask it. It's all God even with our very good attempt to delude ourselves to this fact. Then there's the collective unconscious. This is pretty much accessing the rest of our being. Now the misunderstood idea that we are God. I don't like this one personally, but it's because it's dangerously misguided. Well, I know the realization of our complete self might feel like God, especially with being closer to the source than you've ever imagined, but to say we are God is like our skin cells calling themselves God because they realize they're a part of us. And here's the realization that will truly teach you everything in the least amount of words. Love is the truth. See now we are all part of the greater whole, anything other than love is self-hate. And then we can't forget about the importance of the present moment. The future and past are just egoic attachments, illusionary states set to create the separation. Time isn't as real as you'd like to think. Now for the realization that goes against the modern narrative. Materialism is hollow. This is a characteristic for the lowest heaven and hell realms. It's hollow because it's inherently not aligned with the divine, which is pure energy. Selfish and selfishness is separation, and yet again means self-hate. Now how about the universe being conscious? This is true since we are the universe and or the original vessel experiencing itself. Here's the final one. Secretnicities, which is the idea that events that happen at the same time and seem related but are not connected by a clear cause have deeper meaning. So when you get your mind closer to a state of non-separation, external and internal reality become one and that is when life becomes synchronized, which to help you understand this, I'll tell my encounter of God now. About a year ago, I would always take a walk at 11pm, since this is when my friend and I would always do our daily call, but before this walk I did something different. I prayed and asked, Hey God, I know I've had countless experiences and I shouldn't have any doubts, but I need you to reveal yourself to me in a way that is undeniable. And after that, I went off on my walk and for some odd reason my friend doesn't show up for the call that day, which was a rare occurrence. I brush it off and throw on an audiobook. As I'm walking back, the audiobook says, The fish that formerly swam in its clear water soon died and gave an offensive odor to all who came near. As this is happening, I look at a rain ditch and a fish jumps out of it, which is odd since I don't know how a fish could have even gotten in there to be honest, but instantly after that I look up into the side and a guy in shorts and a t-shirt is waving at me. I wave back and he walks into the woods. Keep in mind, it was nearly freezing outside. During this experience there was an unexplainable feeling, usually something that would pretty much be unsettling, but it wasn't at all. There was an indescribable feeling of unity during this experience. And well, I'm not gonna say I'm completely certain since I'm always building onto my understanding, but out of all the religions, this is what I found them to have in common and to most accurately align in my numerous mythical experiences. Now you can hear more about in this video right here.